So good morning, everyone. Uh, good morning. Uh, welcome to the Engaging the Private Sector session about roadblocks and success stories in the uptake of EOSC services. Um, so we'll, we'll wait a few more minutes till everybody joins quietly after the coffee break. So I see people are starting to join. It's good. So sh sh should we have more attendees than panelists? Maybe we wait. <laughs> yeah, we wait a little bit more. Yeah, so people are coming back from the coffee break, probably also from the networking booths. The expo. Marcin, I've seen that you also have a, a booth on the EOS Digital Innovation Hub there. Good. So I think we should get started so that at least we, we do, we arrive to the interesting part when people are starting to join and uh, so that we can have our discussion uh, in, a, in a good manner. Um, so thank you for joining us at the Engaging the Private Sector about roadblocks and success stories in the uptake of EOSC services. Um, I'm Marie Willems from Trust IT, uh, stakeholder engagement and uh, research communication specialist um, and uh, leading the stakeholder and the communication of uh, the work in shock. Um, welcome. So here you see already who our speakers are. Um, let's first talk about, let me see if I can move to the next slide. Oh, yep. Yeah. Oh, it's too quick. Few housekeeping rules before we, we start. Uh, so the session will be recorded and made available afterwards. Um, please stay muted and keep your video off during the presentations. And you can ask your questions in the chat throughout the session and we'll, we'll aim to answer them uh, as quickly as possible. You can also, we can also unmute you uh, at a certain point uh, in the discussion when you want to ask your question live to, uh, to the panelists. So the agenda of this session is uh, the EOSC Hub uh, Digital Innovation in the Wider Digital Innovation Hub Landscape by Sai Holsinger, uh, digital, then followed by Marcin Plodinek, Plodinek uh, EOSC Digital Innovation Success Stories. Uh, and then we follow up with the discussion with all our panelists uh, engaging the private sector about roadblocks and success stories in the uptake of EOSC services. So in our discussion panel are Marcin, Daniel Alonso, and Martin Kaltenbuck. Uh, we have different points of view uh, involved in this panel discussion because what we aim with this discussion, with this session is uh, to discuss the engagement strategies to increase the uptake of the EOS services in the private sector. So the, digital, so the EOS Cup will kickstart this session with the first presentation to give you a wider idea about the landscape there. Uh, and then we'll engage you in a more focused discussion, a focused presentation on the Digital Innovation Hub success stories, because there are many of them, Marcin, I've understood. Um, and then uh, we'll point out the different points of view in this discussion, uh, also from the, uh, from, uh, the service provider uh, point of view, uh, represented by Martin uh, Kaltenberg by the Semantic Web Company, uh, one of the partners in Shock. Uh, and then we'll obviously close this discussion off with recommendations on uh, engagement with the private sector. Okay, it doesn't seem to move to the next. Oh, yes, it does. So here you see our speakers. Uh, we have Sai, Marcin, Daniel, and Martin. 
Uh, thank you all for joining us in this discussion today. Um, first of all, I would like to understand a little bit who's on the call um, to engage, uh, to, to understand engaging the private sector uh, and, and what that means for you. So um, let me go here. So if you can join us at slider.com and um, go to hashtag realizing EOSC, we can then uh, ask you a few questions. So please join us at slider.com and then hashtag realizing EOSC. So we would like to understand who you are. So stakeholder groups, where do you fit best? Are you a researcher? Do you represent research funders? Do you represent university and research institutes? Are you from the research library and archives? Uh, do you represent research and e-infrastructures, uh, the EOSC e ecosystem? Or do you uh, come from the private sector and industry? So I see the first three are represented among us. Um, Good. Then we move to the next question. So are you involved in data service building or are you a user? So you can, you have four answering options here. Okay, so most of you are involved in service building. Then what do you see as the biggest barriers to uptake of services by the private? Okay, we can come to this one in the discussion as well. Ah, sorry, I see that. And what is your burning question to the panel of experts? I can remind you that you can also ask this, your questions through the Q&A here in, the, in the, the, the panel of Zoom below you. Okay, then I think we can move to the first presentation, uh, how to engage your experience. Good, okay. Perfect, okay. So let's move on to, um, to our next presentation. So Sai, while I present you, um, you can get your presentation ready. I'll stop sharing for the moment. So Sai Holsinger is the business development manager at DGI Foundation, working on strategy and innovation, business development, project management, and IT service management implementation. He has around 15 years of experience in EU funded projects related e-infrastructures for research, as well as leading commercial exploitation, such as in the series of EGEE projects, EGI flagship projects, and currently in the EOSC hub project. He's currently coordinating the EOSC digital innovation hub as the mechanism for bridging industry with the European Open Science Cloud, which will be the focus of this presentation. Sai, the floor is yours. Well, thank you very much uh, for that introduction. Um, and that pretty much sums me up in a nutshell. So thank you very much for the invitation and the opportunity to kind of present what we've been doing, what is now going on three years. So um, it is this digital innovation hub that we have set up for the European Open Science Cloud as a kind of our mechanism for uh, engaging with the commercial sector. So basically what my uh, presentation will try to quickly cover in, in, a, in a kind of a short 
intro is, well, first, what are digital innovation hubs? And then how has the EOSC digital innovation hub been set up? What's it been doing to date? Because this isn't a new initiative. We've been do running activities for three years now, as I said before. And then as projects come down to an end, then the biggest question is, well, what's going to happen with what you created after the project? So I'm going to skip over the, biz the individual business pilots that we've been running because there'll be a dedicated follow-up talk from mine uh, that'll be done by, by March. So just uh, a quick high level overview of what um, what is the digital innovation hub and the initiative. So I think it's kind of like public private partnerships are not really new. These have been going on for, for years, but the thing, the thing is, is that everybody slightly calls them something differently. So as a means for kind of coalescing the concept of public and private partnerships, the European Commission has kind of defined this concept of digital innovation hubs, which really just means that we have an ecosystem where private industry, whether you're a startup SME or large industry can come together with research researchers, accelerators, and investors simply to stimulate innovation. So public sector has been receiving a bunch of funding and is what is now basically considered a, a public good. And in order to kind of stimulate the economy um, and, and, and kind of introduce social and economic impact, working with the private sector is one of the, the biggest drivers of reaching those kind of goals. So. Um, digital Innovation Hubs is formally part of the Commission's uh, digital single market as di for digitizing EU industry. So here you can see that um, the European Open Science Cloud was identified as a key component of this, as well as setting up a pan-European network of digital innovation hubs. So I think there was kind of like a natural bridge for us to reuse existing mechanisms that were already part of the European Commission strategy in order to kind of deliver on the overall goals and objectives. So what are digital innovation hubs supposed to do? So obviously we're to be sp stimulating innovation and a lot of that happens in the pre-commercial space. So there's this repeated term and concept which they talk about, which is test before you invest. Create environments by which new products and services can be tested prior to um, maybe investing too much or for too long inside of the wrong uh, direction. Do some performance testing, verification, get some expertise that's widely available across the, the academic and research space, and then help bridge to the, go to market. So this needs to be coupled not only with technical services, but it also could be through skills and training. Like I said, the expertise available in the research and academic space, the funding mechanisms across the, the European Commission funding programs can be quite disorienting for people coming from the outside world. So helping to provide support to how do we navigate this kind of complex landscape to receive potential funding and investments, and then bring them in part of an ecosystem where you're partnering up with other innovators potentially in your space to create new things that what you otherwise would have been able to. So in, there's a couple different support mechanisms that they put in place. One is there's the number of these digital innovation hubs, competent centers, center of excellences that have been working in this field for quite some time. So kind of the first goal was is let's try to create a catalog of what exists in the market today so that we can start to communicate to a number of these different actors that are interested in this space to identify is there a digital innovation hub already in their specific sector or domain? Is there one already available in their country or region so that we can kind of avoid um, inventing something that may already be there? Um, the other one is, is then to provide a mechanism by which people, if they want to create a new one, they can then register themselves to be recognized to the other um, digital innovation hubs. So one is a static catalog, but the other one is to try to coalesce this as a community. So they um, funded a project which was a, a a CSA style project in order to try to bring the digital innovation hubs as a more coherent community. And this was being run through this project called DIH Net. So that's kind of like, let's say a high level inter introduction to what digital innovation hubs. So really what is the EOSC digital innovation hub been doing? 
So here we see that there's a couple different roles that industry can play within the EOSC landscape. So obviously there's the first one where they can be in this customer role where they're making use of existing services that are already available in the EOSC, which you could find in the EOSC portal. They could also be a provider of services. So offering services to the research community in order for us to augment what our existing portfolios or capabilities could be. The other one is more in this kind of co-development phase where we're working together to develop new products or services in a kind of, uh, in, a, in a partnership. The other one is they're looking for this kind of wider procurement landscape to, so private industries are eligible for participating in the wider procurement framework, which is being conducted by a specific activity in the EOS Hub project, but there are also other projects that are looking into running procurement activities such as uh, Archiver and Okre for two other examples. So the EOS Hub project was what provided us the initial funding for setting up this digital innovation hub. So this was to build on this EC initiative to onboard industrial partnerships with inside of the EOSC. So the spirit of the Europe, of the EOS Hub project was to kind of bridge or pull together a number of these different e infrastructures and research communities building services on top of it. So we thought, why not do the exact same thing with all of our business engagement programs and pull them together inside of the digital innovation hub. So we are focused, but we're not really limited to, but we are focused a little bit on startups and SMEs. We do have some large commercial partnerships and we're, like I said before, mainly focused in the pre-commercial uh, space, but we are interested in looking at what could happen after, let's say a pilot or ex uh, experiment has been run to see if there's some long-term business opportunities. So we started with six pilots. The We onboarded these part of the project to basically help us get up and running. And then over the course of the three years, we've been continuously onboarding new pilots through a number of mechanisms and we got up to 18 uh, to date. So and then obviously the idea is so that this mechanism persists beyond the life of the project. So this is what we did. We set up our own dedicated website. We have our own branding in order to kind of be somewhere in the in between to set up this kind of long term digital innovation hub um, after the EOS hub has uh, ended. So the website will remain. We have our online social media and we're running community style meetings uh, that are kind of more open to the wider community, et cetera. So we are kind of blocked out the different service offerings that we have between piloting and co-design activities, the, the offering of access to technical services. So we started with compute storage and data management services because those were the partners that were involved in the project. But through our partnerships, we're trying to then extend the service offering. So for an example, machine learning was been added because of our partnership with Dijon, um, deep hybrid cloud. Then couple that with the human services and then offer a little bit of media exposure so that uh, small SMEs can uh, kind of take part in an international uh, organization or community to get increased exposure than what they would have otherwise. So I'm not going to run through all of these partnerships. It's just to kind of show that we, we are beyond the individual pilots. We are trying to partner with other associations, uh, other EC projects, other digital innovation hubs, and then individual commercial organizations as well. So this is what Marchin will go through in a second, which is just a quick overview of our 18 business pilots covering a plethora of different technologies as well as different sectors because the EOSC is sector agnostic from that kind of point of view. And then my last slide basically brings us into what are we gonna do now moving forward? So we do have a couple of final business pilots that we are finalizing uh, that we onboarded recently over the last couple of months. So the project ends. December with a three month extension. Um, we are, we had run a, we had organized a success story brochure with the first pilots that we run. So we would like to do an updated version of that bro brochure and then kind of continue to onboard new pilots and establish new uh, partnership agreements to extend our, our service offering. From a more organizational point of view, we would like to have a kind of a neutral terms of reference by which the community agrees to operate and how they would participate, what are the communication mechanisms, what are the decision-making processes, things like that. 
that. Continue to coordinate with the other EOSC governance bodies because we don't live in a vacuum. We are part of a wider initiative. So it's quite important to keep this kind of communication um, channels open with the other working groups and the executive board and the new EOSC association, et cetera. But really just kind of the EOSC hub project really helped us kind of build this thing. So what we wanna do is continue to coalesce this as a wider community. Um, so how this will be funded uh, moving forward? Well, we do have right now in-kind effort from our DIH participants and the partners. Um, we are looking to have, we do have some EC funded projects that are in some way or another supporting the Digital Innovation Hub, hopefully in the Infra EOSC 03 projects. Um, EU Hubs for Data, which specifically Daniel Alonso, one of our uh, panelists, will go into more detail about that. So we will see a number of EC projects kind of contributing to the overall um, the overall objectives of the Digital Innovation Hub. And then, and, uh, and that's kind of the short to medium term. Um, and then the longer term will be to look at um, introducing a potential membership model. So uh, this just kind of gives you a, a, a few bits of, uh, of the DIH and numbers in terms of the scale in which we've hit in terms of the number of pilots, CPU hours, storage, the success stories, the amount of funding that we've redistributed or in a value to the SMEs themselves. We've been active in our outreach and industry events participation and onboarding services into the wider EOSC marketplace. So I, I'm the coordinator, so I tend to always be the one given the introductory uh, presentations, but obviously there's a big team behind us that really make all of this happen. So just a quick acknowledgement and thank you to the, to the wider team. You can visit our website there, follow us on social media, or if you have any questions or something, you feel free to, to shoot an email. So with that, I'll stop and happy to pass back over to, to Marcin or take any quick questions that you may have. Thanks. Thanks, Ty. Um, Marcin, while you, uh, while you get ready, I'll present you uh, while you get your slides up. Um, Marcin is head of the IoT Systems Department in uh, the PSNC, that's uh, the Poznan Supercomputing uh, Center. Uh, since 2002, he has been working in a number of EU-funded projects focused mainly on research concerning distributed computing, scientific workflows, remote instrumentation, and Internet of Things. He's working, uh, coordinating, and supporting business pilots in EOS Digital Innovation Hub which will be the focus of his presentation. In addition, he's part of other Digital Innovation Hub initiatives like Digital Innovation Hub CPS, uh, MIDIH, I'm sure you'll, you'll say something about that, and the EIA, uh, EU Hubs for Data, uh, which will be presented by Daniel later on. Thanks, Marcin. Okay, thank you. I hope you can hear me and you can see my slides. Can you just copy? We can, yeah. Okay, thank you for uh, this invitation and nice uh, introduction. And uh, okay, uh, so uh, what I will present uh, basically is um, the overview of different uh, uh, pilots, also uh, what, what were the phases uh, with our pilots, where, how we started and what are the current running pilots. Also, uh, I will give a few examples and um, pilots uh, to showcase uh, what is the different support models certainly how to become a new pilot and uh, well how we organize ourselves so a bit from the kitchen side uh, so how how uh, the, the mechanism works and uh, yeah so uh, let's start so about the the, the, the pilot so uh, you have seen already these slides uh, a slide from uh, uh, from size so we started from the six initial pilots that were included in in uh, the, the EC uh, project called uh, EOS Hub. And we, uh, during the course of the project, we onboarded 12 next pilots. And uh, so basically um, this initial pilots that, uh, that uh, I, I present here um, just help us to define the whole of uh, DIH in the sense of its operation. It's uh, how we work uh, with, um, with SME, how, what, what are the kind of requests, how to organize the work, um, uh, what works, what does not work, what should be improved, uh, all the procedures. And uh, yeah, so basically we were starting not maybe from scratch, but as Sai said, uh, there was few initiatives uh, on, on separate initiatives to work with 
with the um, uh, with the business, with the with the commercial. But um, we saw how to do it in, in a federated way, uh, how uh, in a distributed way, how um, combine different programs and. Uh, and also how to professionalize some of the of the procedures because um, if you want to scale, you need to do it. If you just uh, support six pilots, it's it's fine. It's but if you want to to multiply that, uh, you need to change the style of working, automize things, etc. As you can see, those pilots, but also these current pilots, are coming from different domains, uh, having completely different requirements. And they need different support types. So as you see, this is uh, this is not one type of uh, you know one domain. Uh, this is this is really multiplied domains of, uh, and we are really not uh, bound to to, to specific uh, problems. This is this is for the EOS ecosystem, uh, as we say. So an EOS ecosystem is quite uh, you know uh, there's huge diversity in, in this ecosystem. So just to be more specific, right? How and uh, what we do? Because uh, you know, from the pilot's name, it's hard hard to say. So first of all, for each of them, we go through some initial phases. We identify the requirements, their their needs, and and we then identify how to support those pilots. And there are basically different support models. So uh, uh, from simply one that we started actually in the project was. Okay, they, they need the support on computing, storage, on or other kind of um, resources, and um, uh, basically, uh, here the example is is the projects like data data for uh, video coding and, and and compression of BBC, where where basically they were looking for some additional resources to do the R and D of of uh, of. Uh, that they could use later in in their uh, for their models for their their business. So it's not directly running the uh, their services on our infrastructure. Is to test something. Is to do their R and D and maybe to to also to combine with some and investigate some of our services. The second uh, kind are the one that were looking not for resources. Uh, in terms of you know physical resources, uh, computing storage, and those kind, electronic, I would say, but more on the resources in terms of expertise and and uh, and uh, network. So these are the examples here of, of uh, Ibiza, Erasmus Space, and a few others. The, the more advanced one are, are the one that want to co-design. Co so they they have some ideas. They they have the, their own products, and they want to combine this with the EOS Hub services. And, and combining with this EOS hub uh, and, and EOS in general services, <clears throat> they want to, to uh, <clears throat> deliver a new kind of product and uh, added value services. And, and that's, well, this kind of engagement uh, definitely needs much more um, engagement of, on both sides and efforts. And the last one is, okay, we go beyond that and we partnership with other projects. And we together uh, uh, support or co-develop uh, with with the with the with the pilot. So this is not the services are not coming from one project. The services are coming from uh, several projects or several initiatives, and we work together and combine different, you know, uh, like a, a, like a Lego bricks or um, uh, uh, Lego blocks uh, together, and and uh, and that uh, combines uh, together the, the, the support. Okay, uh, just to be specific, one of these examples was uh, data fern uh, furniture at uh, enterprise analysis. Okay, they had a specific uh, uh, problem uh, uh, during the pilot phase. They, they were um, um, <clears throat> defining the architecture with us. We helped them also with the expertise and then they built using our resources, the service, the outcome you could see here, uh, how the, the, the service um, uh, looks like. The, 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 this is one of our access, uh, success stories. And okay, here you see they had quite complex uh, stack. They used or, or were, um, they were asking for expertise and we provided also expertise what would be the best to use. And they used a lot of the open source stack and then they used cloud compute that is the service of EOSC and that's how um, we provided for them the support. That's the like level one. Uh, that's um, another example where um, there is the, the, the um, uh, 
I would say scientific oriented uh, 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 business uh, business case where they, they 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 wanted to solve some it's research problem but but they they sell this kind of uh, services and and um, this is about addressing proliferation of toxic microalgae so this is important problem to solve and uh, so basically um, uh, they were looking for cloud technologies they wanted to use big data computational modeling uh, they wanted to to have help with uh, uh, data life cycle and what what happened uh, they basically built uh, uh, and they, they added their own uh, models and their um, their uh, uh, sector uh, knowledge and they built whole solution uh, using the, uh, the EOS services so that's I think the perfect example and this is even more this is the services coming from different projects so this is this was really uh, you know a uh, kind of advanced thing and I would say it, it's not also to, that simple right to you know that that also took took time okay another example is um, is here uh, the, the, uh, this is the how we combine uh, the work uh, of two projects in the same time this is the the uh, the field of machine learning deep learning and this is uh, uh, be inside uh, and basically what uh, um, what what we, we've done uh, um, together um, was uh, uh, to 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 partnership with uh, sorry because, okay here is the slide to partnership with uh, with the uh, deep uh, hybrid data cloud project and uh, basically uh, we provided so something deep uh, our partner provided something uh, and basically uh, uh, that that helped the, the company to deliver service so another example is what kind of expertise we provide we i don't go with one specific it's it's what are the subjects like machine learning deep learning security uh, authentication authorization like domain services they needed for example experts on geo, geo related science on agriculture uh, or big data technology so different kind of expertise this is just example this is not uh, full list it's just to give you uh, example okay that was the examples and now well how to get involved how to start working with us so basically there are a few opportunities so there are open calls on that um, Okay, we do for to attracting wider communities to target really specific areas. So we have different mechanisms like vouchers, direct funding, etc. I think uh, we might discuss further about this also. So how to join? Uh, um, so you can join also the community, not exactly just be a, a pilot. You can establish a partnership if you are a, pro a project, for example, of a company that you want to work with us. And, and if you, you also can contribute your expertise to DIH, so you can be a contributor to DIH. Well, this is for the network can be a kind of benefit for that. And uh, well, you can ask us uh, uh, through web page if you have new pilot, if you want to kickstart engagement, you, if you want to join our forum on the web page. And yeah, so basically uh, the very important point is collaboration with other projects. So we are being exploitation channel already of of several other EOS projects, and we are defining long-term collaboration scope and agreement. So uh, yeah, we invite everybody to collaborate with us. So how is the support organized? So there are different communication channels, like uh, boards, status meetings, technical meetings, uh, so uh, through a website, the newsletters. There are uh, the community forums with its meetings for networking, there are innovation workshops, Several webinars, uh, like the, some of them you can see on the web page regarding marketing, I, IPR, so there is a an, 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 uh, typo, technology transfer models. So we collaborate with uh, event participation and we promote uh, success stories and publishing these success stories. Okay. Okay, so for um, basically uh, support type, so we give the technical support so okay, well, how uh, how can I combine these services? How can I use which two service should I use? Uh, and um, also how to combine the architecture? We help with defining the architecture, and uh, we are bringing also uh, the pilots and providers like uh, infrastructure providers or providers of the services. Sometimes you need the communication stack, and we are in the middle. We help. So we do the marketing, so one-to-one -one meetings with the experts on the exploitation, communication, other parts. 
There are also the general EOSC webinars that we promote and also the de dedicated webinars that we ask, okay, what do you need? And this is more generic need than we organize with the expert more general, uh, uh, let's say, uh, webinar. And also there's important points of funding opportunities. So open calls in the area of computing, finding partners, building together even consortia, things like that. And what's after the pilot? So basically pre-commercial agreements, then commercial agreements. Uh, we also invite to join our community for different reasons like networking, community meetings, funding, new common initiatives, etc. So, and as I said, we are not, not, not more uh, bound to one project. So this is long-term initiatives. Okay, lessons learned is something for later, so I will not go through it. So again, our uh, uh, DIH team, and that's it. Thank you very much. Thanks, Marcin. I don't know if there's any questions for Marcin at the moment. Uh, otherwise, we, we take them to the, to the discussion panel. Um, so I'm going to start to share my screen again. So now we are going to start the uh, the discussion panel, and I want uh, would like to invite Daniel to um, to present um, his presentation. Let me first put it in presentation mode. Um, Daniel, uh, I'll present you briefly. Um, so Daniel Alonso is technical tech telecommunication engineer by the Universidad Politécnica de Madrid and Master in Advanced Sciences of Modern Telecommunications by the Universidad de Valencia. Since 2017, he's working with the Strategic and Competitive uh, Strategic CS SCI Department at, I at ITI, Technological Institute of Valencia, where he plays the role of artificial intelligence and big data partnerships driver, which includes the establishment of collaborations, the coordination of proposals and participation in national and European R&D projects related to big data and artificial intelligence. He's part of the steering committee of the Big Data Value Public-Private Partnerships and chair of the BDVA uh, iSpaces group. He's coordinating the H2020 project EU Hubs for Data starting in September 2020 and aimed at the establishment of European Federation of Data-Driven Digital Innovation Hubs. Daniel, uh, the floor is yours. Okay, thanks a lot, Marie. So actually, yes, this is the project that we are presenting here now. Uh, thanks a lot for giving us the opportunity to present this uh, new, presently born project. As you mentioned before, it just started a couple of months ago. And uh, the complete name is this one, European Federation of Data-Driven Innovation Hubs, which is, I think, quite explicit. So if you go to the next slide, and I am really happy to, to, to see that there are many, many similarities and many um, several collaboration uh, aspects with EOX uh, Hub, also the EOS community. So basically this project is the result of this, uh, of this evolution that you can see here, as also as I mentioned before. First, I think that all of us are, are aware of the value from data and the companies, industry, society, uh, citizens, and so on. So actually, as you can see here, the, the, the value of the data economy in Europe is expected to reach more than 1,000 uh, 1, by euros by 2025. So this is why the Commission put in place uh, in 2014, as I explained before, the Digital Innovation Hubs, to bring all this innovation, all this value to the regional ecosystems. In our case, we are talking about data-driven innovation, and uh, this is the core of our project, the so-called data-driven innovation hubs. Uh, which is basically, which are basically digital innovation has based on, on, on data and related capacities. So the next step was just to, uh, to foster collaboration among the, all those digital innovation hubs in Europe focused on data-driven innovation and experimentation. As also, as I presented before, there are many, many hubs in, in Europe, in, included in this catalog of the European Commission. So in this project, where, what we are trying to, to, to aim is just to bring together all the European, or at least most of the relevant European initiatives working on big data and uh, data driven innovation. So as you can see here, the starting point of the project is uh, 12 relevant digital innovation has on big data. Some of them has, have been already mentioned in the in the EOS uh, hub because Sineca, HPC for Poland and also EGI are, are members of the project. 
So for to accomplish this objective, we are relying in, in six pillars. So this is the starting point of the Federation, these 12 digital innovation has, but we are planning to evolve during the during the prior lifetime to include all uh, all other digital innovation hubs to cover uh, other geographical regions in Europe. We are also aim to to include to to build a complete ecosystem around around big data. Uh, rely on, on an offer. We are going to build a federated catalog of data services, but also data sets. Uh, so we are constructing, building, let's say, an European offer that uh, to comply with the demand at regional level. So we will be able through the hubs in the, in the federation to make accessible all this offer at the regional ecosystem involving small actors, citizens and society driven by the, the hubs in the federation. And finally, uh, similar to, to EOS uh, hub, we are also planning to to be sustainable after the project is, is, is finished. So we are, we are also starting uh, to build uh, sustainability and also business model. So Marek, if you go to the last slide, I want to just emphasize here why the, we think the project you have for data uh, fits in this workshop and also how, how we can contribute to, the, to this discussion here because we are uh, considering uh, this double dimension. On the one hand, we have this European versus regional dimension that I mentioned before because we are aimed, again at establishing the federated catalog of services and data available at regional level, but we are all also want to, to match the offer side together with the demand side. So as you can see here, from the offer side, we aim to bring together services from the different European initiatives in Europe, not only data sets, but also tools, assets, marketplaces, and so on, but also to leverage results from other projects. Of course, we are very, very much focused on the big data value PPP projects, some of them, some of them already finished. Some of them are finishing next year. But again, uh, we are, we want to leverage some results from this project, but also why not from other projects in the in the European landscape? But also we want to develop interoperability models now based on IDSA models, but also to pro, to other reference to provide also compatibility with other initiatives like, for instance, Gaia X and some others. And from the demand side, again, is one of the pillars that are driving our our project, so we want to bring this offer closer to the ecosystem in, 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 the, in, the, in the European regions to support SMEs and small actors in the adoption of those data-driven services and technologies, but also to provide a financial support during the project uh, through the Cascade funding, and this is about, uh, one open call that we are launching next month. I will, I will explain later on during the discussion in the next slide, but also to provide technical and business support uh, one uh, after the project also is, is done. So just my last slide is just to, again, to announce, um, if you go to the next slide, Mariek, uh, my last slide is just to to, um, to announce that we are launching our first open call next month to attract uh, companies, SMEs uh, and startups to use the services of the Federation. And uh, well, uh, there, if you go to our web page, we will see uh, all this information uh, very soon. So this is all from my side right now. I can we can go very further during the discussion, but I just wanted to to provide the main guidelines behind this project and also to to show how it fits in the discussion of today. Thanks, Perfect. Mike. Thanks. Thanks, Daniel. It was very nice. Um, I don't know if there's any questions, maybe also from the panel for for Daniel already. Otherwise, we start the discussion uh, with the. Uh, with Martin first. So Martin, can you explain, uh, so please present yourself and, uh, and your role as, as private partner also in, uh, in shock and, uh, and your contribution to, to this discussion. Thanks. Sure, yeah. Hello everybody, Martin Kaltenberg from Semantic Web Company. I'm here co-founder and CFO of the company. We are in Vienna in Austria, but we are a software provider and service provider in, uh, with customers all across Europe, North America and Southeast Asia in the area of data and metadata management. So it fits well into things that we have heard before. Um, we are partner in Shock. We are, I think, one of two or three industry partners in total uh, in Shock, so that we also can demonstrate how the marketplace and the environment of EOSC and Shock as a partner hopefully of EOSC, uh, can be used by industry. And we work there on a pilot together with some partners at the moment on electoral studies and electoral data to show how knowledge graphs and linked data can be used to find more insights into this field. But that's just a short introduction, uh, what we are doing and what Semantic Web Company is doing and what we are doing in shock. Um, maybe from an industry viewpoint, it's very interesting. We very often participate also in uh, research projects 
uh, together with research partners. And we very much follow here the EU data strategy. So that means this is this digital market for data, uh, one of the core angles also of the European Commission of the regulations and policies in the fields. And uh, we also participate in several projects. So Daniel, I will send you a link afterwards, but we are, for example, partner in trusts. That is a trusted secure data sharing space. Uh, it's one of the projects where we work on how we can uh, securely and trusted share some data between industry partners with a focus on financial data and telecom operators. And I have seen that you have no center also in your project. So there's a good connection because they're also in trusts. That's just a short one. Um, what I would like to discuss about, because I think we discuss about services and how that can be used by private sector uh, and by the industry. Um, I think there are two areas that are interesting for discussion. The one is for sure services and tools. So I think this goes in both directions. I think a uh, scientific area can use the commercial tools, but also vice versa. The industry should make more use of the tools available. But I think also a discussion or point of discussion should be how can industry make use uh, of the data that is available in EOSC, because uh, we always in Europe, we discuss and argue very much that we say, oh, the US has so much data because the Googles and the Apples and however you call them are there and they generate all the data and we need it for machine learning and for algorithm trainings and stuff like that. And the same in Asia and they are so far ahead of us. Uh, I think this is partly true, but I think if we could make, for example, use of EOSC in the European industry, there is so much really interesting and great data inside uh, that could be made use of by the industry. And that's the second point. I think we should discuss about services and tools, but also about the data itself. How can we make use of that? Uh, and we have to find a way how to make use because I know it's open science, it's somehow public data, but I also have discussions and for sure there need to be a, a system of incentives back from industry to the data owners, to the data publishers. Otherwise it's just a one way. Uh, taking. So yeah, that's a little bit of an intro, what I'm interested in, or what I would like to discuss. So yeah. I'm Thank sure you, Martin. That's very, that's very interesting because you, you mentioned indeed that it's not only about services, but it's also about all the data that could be available uh, through, through EOS. So for uh, for those who, um, so when we look at the first question that we that we wanted uh, all of the panelists to answer, I think Martin, you've you've answered part of it, but uh, but let's see what what the others say and see if you have anything to to add to this. So for those um, who have just started or are started to market their uh, research resources uh, to industry, how should we move forward with regard to outreach, uh, onboarding, partnering with existing digital innovation hubs, other H twenty twenty projects? or uh, European in initiatives. Um, Daniel, do you want to kick this question off? Yes, of course, because since Martin already mentioned uh, trust, which is, of course, I, I know very much this project. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, well, it, it is one of the, the main uh, objectives of EU has for data, because also the commission uh, for us has emphasized very much this issue, how to leverage results from uh, not only past, but also existing and future projects and how to, uh, um, how to partner again with the 16 DIH, with other networks of DIH, but also with the new uh, network of European DIH that will be funded under the new the new European the new uh, digital Europe program. So for us, it's, it's, it's crucial just to leverage on all th those collaborations. For instance, in our case, in terms of the EU has for data, since our, our one of our main focus is, is on data sharing and contributing to the creation of this uh, European common data spaces that the Commission has uh, already mentioned in the European Data Strategy published uh, next uh, last uh, last March. Of course, uh, one of our main objectives is to rely on this uh, industry, but also personal data platforms that, that are now in place under the big data value umbrella, not only trust, because we know very much this project, but also other projects, for instance, data ports, uh, Opertus Mundi, there are many, many of them, and we will rely on those projects to provide uh, platforms to share data, to reuse data, to mobilize all those data and also to, to again, to contribute to this European common data space. So again, for us, it's crucial to collaborate with other projects, other DIH, other networks, other federation, but also to, to, to make it, the life easier to the, to, the, to the demand side for companies. Uh, now, for instance, at least in Valencia, in Spain, some of the companies uh, are finding very difficult to, to access to all those projects, to all those assets, to all those results that all of us are generating. So one of the objectives also is not so much to collaborate, but also to make this collaboration available for 
for the companies at regional and regional and also local level. So this the two again the two sides of this uh, of this problem that I mentioned my slide before. Uh, demand but also offer sides. Yeah. And you know, I think that's that's very interesting. So you mentioned uh, to contribute to the EU common data space through uh, through the leveraging on, on already existing initiatives, the data platforms such as trusts and data ports, but also to make it easier for uh, for the demand side to understand what's what is out there, right? Absolutely. Um, yeah, Marcin, could you could you contribute to this question to, yes. to what so, Daniel so says? I, I will first contribute a bit from uh, uh, Daniel's project <laughs> perspective uh, still is uh, one of the things Martin you asked was about this, uh, what are the uh, terms of use of those data? And I think uh, the project focus on data like uh, uh, EUHAPS for data is defining that it's trying to define for each data set, what are the you know, conditions, how, how, what are the license, what are the, how can I use these specific data sets? Okay, but from um, the general perspective um, to reply from other, uh, from with other end of, um, to these questions, I think first of all, um, there are several, as like uh, I said before, several kind of uh, DI ages. So first, you should look around, and you always have regional um, DIH in your region, most probably in most of the Europe now. And then uh, most of them are um, really domain specific. So maybe this regional is not for you, but there is another also close to you, and it's is regional specific. Um, I, I would say that many of the DIHs in general are, are um, that this is very important to have the regional scope and to work with regional partners because there's a lot of barriers, including uh, language and number of, of other things. And there is a lot of the things where you have to go in field, for example, to help with sensors, with other things, depending on what kind of DIH it is. As I said before, I'm, for example, involved also in manufacturing industry digital innovation hub in manufacturing industry you need to go to factory right so you don't go in other parts of europe usually you go local so then besides this locally you have also this pan-european uh, kind of initiatives like uh, here um, uh, EOSC and also this federation part uh, kind of that is even uh, more global like uh, hubs for data and a few other federations and uh, the second point it is for if you are project how to how to in, uh, you know engage and how to start if you are a project as i said in eos ecosystem we we welcome all the projects if you are looking for the exploitation how to reach the the the, the, the companies wider uh, you know uh, broader uh, uh, the number of them well try to contact us or or if, if this is data driven contact i have for data or other kind of this kind of initiatives okay thank you Thanks, Marcin. So, so you're pointing out the importance of the, the regional digital innovation hub for uh, hubs for, for companies, but for EOS projects, you, you, you really point out that the, the EOS digital innovation hub could help them further. Uh, also, uh, without any particular pilot project in, in mind, for example. Yes, even without, this is a partnership between projects on, well, you need to have a specific focus or target, but you don't need to do experimentation, that's the first thing. And this Pan-European are kind already of uh, combining regional ones. So the actual, we, we are redirecting or to other DIH or to other projects or to others. This is like, uh, where is your contact point? Sometimes the regional DIH will not give you all the expertise you need and they might not be in the network of other you know, uh, initiatives and might not redirect you to correct uh, contact, right? So this is also uh, you know, uh, about the business model. If the regional DIH We'll have a business model to, to redirect you to, to other one. And I think these larger initiatives like Ohas for Data or several others are defining this kind of rules how this can happen. Thanks. Martin, do you want to add anything to this this uh, this discussion? Questions so are very interesting to learn more about the digital innovation hubs, but maybe also for the participants interesting and maybe one can help us. There's another thing I learned last week. It's called EIT, the European Institute of Innovation and Technology. Uh, maybe can you help me as an industry uh, participant, but also people listening? What's the differentiation? So what what what's better? I'm not sure if it's possible to say what what's better, but what's the difference and and where can I? find my way through that landscape if I'm from industry and I want to, to work together with others. 
Not sure if we have an expert on EIT in the panel. If you want, I can I can maybe say two words mm -hmm. on, on this if if you want. So, um, yeah, it is it is a partnership where they they onboard they onboard members. I think the EIT mm -hmm. is an interesting one because they do a lot of like internal projects in which they then redistribute money to like let's say smaller piloting or or project space. In fact, EGI got invited to be part of one. Um, we were just a pure infrastructure provider on the back end. But <clears throat> the thing is, is that they prioritize their members only. So really, if you aren't a member, you aren't eligible for the individual funding. A, in, a member can invite you in to participate it through kind of a subcontracting, but it's, uh, has a, it's limited up to, uh, I think it's 60K or something like that. So, yeah, so 100. So EGI was invited, but through a, a member so it is an, it's an interesting group that tries to pull in industrial participation also with um university universities as well so that they, they are a digital innovation of a classic example it's just it's a little bit close from the from the membership model point of point of view i hope it's that provides at least it's some it's just yeah sorry it's just as a uh, well mature business model yeah okay. if, if you yeah. want to participate as I remember in three projects and depending on what is your uh, participation in these projects, for example, you need to pay, uh, uh, well, like, let's say 100K, right? Depending or more, depending how, what is, will be your engagement, right? So there is like member fee and all that and you don't have guarantee also that uh, you will get those projects. So it's, you know, it's, uh, if you are a large uh, institution uh, you for sure you can afford right so it's uh, yeah I, I think, think this we is are also SMEs uh, we are here also um, as a DIH more towards uh, um, innovators if you know what I mean it's uh, towards startups and startups will not not uh, lie us uh, with uh, I think with AIT because uh, and there is you know starting barrier I think while you are an, a mid cap or, or larger companies for sure Mm -hmm. You will go directly to AAT, I think, because you will gain more benefits there, probably. Yeah, if you are very large. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense to take a look at both of them, I guess. But the DIH, it's more the, the pre innovation, maybe, and easier to get in and to cooperate and collaborate. And the IT is more a bigger vehicle, and bigger vehicles always are often are also more complex. And yeah, okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. So, so let's move to the next question. Um, so what are the biggest barriers to uptake of services by the private sector? Um, Martin, do you want to start with this question? Sure. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, or let's have a discussion on that or in dialogue. I'm very interested in your feedback. Uh, I mean, we are selling software and services uh, across the globe and, and what we usually need or what we see of research projects and we are, we are also we are parts of them um, is industry wants to have let's say this wonderful word enterprise readiness so what is in its security its performance its stability its scalability so these four areas and then so so how can we react on this is this possible because if i adapt a service from industry then I want to have this readiness in place. And the second thing is how can we solve, I think we should discuss uh, who is the legal entity uh, that I can, can take that service from. We have we, we had that very often in, in research projects. You know, you want to establish sustainability and you try to find a model and then you have built something, 12 partners together and then we put it in a wonderful uh, platform or services platform or whatever and then we have found the first customer and the customer says oh okay who is my legal contact point who is the entity I buy that from and who makes my maintenance and support so I think these are for me two things I mean beside visibility to find the things enterprise readiness and and who is the the partner that provides me with with uh, maintenance and support from such services I think this needs to be solved, otherwise industry doesn't buy. That's that's my experience. 
So the enterprise readiness and how can we solve the legal entity issue? I think Daniel, you, you are getting ready to answer this question. Uh, well, no, I completely agree with, with Martin. And actually uh, I would add from my, from my perspective, but also very much aligned with the DIH uh, role that uh, as I mentioned before uh, in our case, but we have um, quite often is the lack of skills for companies. Uh, mostly uh, small actors. It's always the same thing, the lack of skills in, in digital technologies, but mostly also uh, in, in data analytics and data, data innovation. And, and also uh, an environment for experimentation. So again, this is very much related with the test before invest uh, paradigm that is very much related with the DIH. And uh, I, would add the, I would add those, uh, those uh, barriers to uh, also to readiness that uh, uh, Martin mentioned below, M Martin mentioned before. In terms of data, for sure, we can discuss later on, but in terms of data, more specific, uh, what I, I think the barriers are lack of awareness of companies uh, about the value of data. So still there are many, many actors that are not really aware of the, the, of the data that they are, they, are, they, are, they are owning So and how they can get value from data. Uh, also trust, and this is one thing that is very important for, for, for the small actors in the regional ecosystem, the trust in the, in the, in the, in the service uh, provider, but also in the, in the, in the DIH and also uh, access to data and, and also about the legal, uh, legal uh, aspect of data sharing, data usage, GDPR and so on. So again, there are many, many barriers to uptake. Those are, some of them are more general to digital services uh, as such, but also some of them are more related to, to data. And uh, okay, we can discuss further, but for, from my point of view, this is the most uh, important barriers to, for uh, market uptake of these services. Thanks. Marcin, do you want to do you want to add anything here? Yes. Uh, yes what have you I, seen I would like in your to, to case? Ask, yeah, I, I would like to, to add, but I don't know because I have also the slide on lesson learned and this lesson learned actually are addressing the barriers. So should I show this slide? Yes, or please. Should I just yeah. say, okay. I'll um, stop sharing. Okay. And, uh, yeah, so basically I think uh, you can see it now, right? I, I think yes. one, one of the thing is is the understanding. It's, it's um, when, when you combine academia and, and the, um, in the industry, it's, it's, uh, there's a lot of you know, uh, buzzwords, a lot of misunderstandings and terminology that is unclear. This is what I'm saying is from operational point of view when you run the IH and what, what, uh, what are the usual things that, that, I, that I see. This is this were so many were so many misunderstandings uh, on what we provide, what we say by that, what uh, and what actually how the academic world uh, world uh, ecosystem works because it's a completely different ecosystem I would say than the, 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 the industry. Then um, the, another point is in the case of EOS, this is moving target that does really not help and. Uh, well, but the, the IT is moving in general, but EOS in particular is, and you don't know where this is, this is going, I would say. <laughs> and also um, uh, at what Martin said, I, uh, this, is, this is about um, this availability, reliability of services resources. As you said, this has high expectations and you know, in academic uh, world, this, is, this might be a bit different, right? And uh, also uh, that, well, they, uh, the companies always are comparing us with offers, uh, commercial offers and service. And we are saying, please don't do that. But they're saying, why not? <laughs> we should, right? Because it's, uh, this, this is uh, where, where we look for. Um, and uh, okay, some, sometimes they test, but uh, yeah. And, and I think one of the things that I didn't wrote here, but this is very important, is time. So for the companies, the timeline and the time is very important. And while in academic world and in some communities, the time is, uh, you know, the, the short time is few months and uh, the, the midterm is few years for the community, but for your academic community, but for the company, you have like, I don't know, three months project, six months, one year, you commercialize, you go, you continue and you don't, you know, you don't wait for next projects. You don't wait for, you just, you know, uh, want to go through whole um, core commercialization path or whatever, right? So you you have your target, right? And this is the numbers and uh, and you want to go to market. And that's not necessarily what academia wants, understands and goes into this direction. They 
well, they have new challenges, so they jump to new challenges, right? So, and uh, the last point, sorry to, to say uh, so much points, but uh, I think uh, this, this brings lots of uh, overhead uh, to, towards orienting SMEs on this complex environment. And that's, uh, that's not somehow easy to, to, to really explain them how and why this, this is like that. And, uh, and also it's, it's about, well, um, this is from our perspective and not barrier for them, but for us, we need to scale. And I think this is also, I think for, important for Daniel and for any other initiatives. We, we, what works for a few supporting few pilots will not work or it does not work for uh, if you want to go large scale operation because you have so much diversity and needs requirements and so it's, it's not just marketing dissemination and, and that's it. You, you need really, really to combine all the experts you have. It's complex thing if you want to scale. It's okay, thanks. Thanks, Marcin. That was very interesting, especially the, the, the scaling part. I think that's, that's very interesting. Sai, I think there are also some, some comments on, on the chat. Do you want to elaborate on them? I think some of them, yeah, uh, I think most of them are just comments on the uh, on people agreeing with what has been said or presented in. Uh, um, so I think some of them are from from me. So for an example, there was the one about from Daniel with the, the crosses showing the European dimension with the regional dimension and the demand and the in the side offer. I think that's a very nice diagram to kind of show what the digital innovation hubs are kind of kind of working towards they're in those kind of crossroads because there are those regional digital innovation hubs but there are the european dimension how do you bridge those two especially when sme support is done in the local market but then you're how do you bridge the also the demand the demand side and the supply side as well so that kind of cross was a really nice i think overview of what that was um, I think I shared a, a, sh I shared a link to our funding, which I actually think is quite important. So like there's going to be a lot of initiatives like like Daniel's from from EU hubs for data that is doing open calls. So I think we should all like everybody in this community should kind of take that as a priority that we should be sharing everybody's uh, open call mechanisms and funding opportunities so that people in our community can take advantage of what's happening in other communities. So I think this is a really nice shared activity or shared approach that we should kind of all get on get on board with. Um, I think Martin, there was a comment about Martin, sorry, Martin, this concept of the industry should be pushing data um back into the system is a very important one that i think isn't talked about very much a lot of times they're only talking about industry taking from or reusing the research data and we actually i've heard more and more people mentioning this but probably not as much as as what they should so industry contrib contributing data i think is an important one and then yeah just about so what's about specifically to citizen science and humanities and stuff like that. So I think this is just a resource balance. So when you, when you are participating in the community, you can then raise what you find to be important. So for an example, if we start to have some collaborations with the shock community, we can now have an influx of interest and activities specifically in that community so that what maybe isn't being covered now could be. So it's not necessarily of, we're, we're not covering it. It's just that we have to do a resource balance. So if, um, if you guys would be interested in understanding then maybe we can try to maybe prioritize focusing on identifying what funding, but right now what shows up on the website is kind of like what's being shared amongst, uh, amongst ourselves. Um, yeah, and I think the last point from Marchin is probably somebody also agreed about the time scales in academia. But I also think that the digital innovation of for anybody that's looking to get into this space, do not go in and say that this is a marketing problem. Because once you onboard them, that's when the real work starts and that shouldn't be underestimated. So I think that pretty much covers the, the, ch the chats. So okay. nice. I'll, pass it back. I'll pass it back to you guys. So, so. Thanks. Thanks, Sai. Um, okay, so let's go on with the next question. Collaborating with the Digital Innovation Hub. 
how can we gain that confidence for you to collaborate with the Digital Innovation Hub? I think maybe Marcin, you can you can talk from your experience and then Martin, I would like to understand from you how you would uh, see that. So, um, as we said, for why collaborating with Vic, I would say it's uh, what I think what it was replied inside presentation before, because mostly uh, you can test before invest that that's I think uh, uh, one of the thing. Another is that you are looking, uh, and that's from perspective of EOS that you can look for uh, relevant data that is in open space, or you look for relevant expertise that you don't have in, as as a startup as 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 a me, because you have you can have limited resources and you focus on specific thing and you you want maybe to partnership not necessarily with your competitor. But maybe with also the, the academia in this case, right? That is some, sometimes it's, it's easier, I would say. Or maybe you want to 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 join and also look what others are doing or network with other companies. So I think, uh, well, um, that's that's why collaborating with Vic. And also, I would say uh, some are looking for the services, but I would say it's just. Some I think more is on the expertise, uh, networking, and testing. That's that's how do do I see. It. Thanks, Martin. Yeah, I think that's the one of the most important things: how innovation can be created because you have to play around and test, and then also meet other people and 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 learn new things. Uh, I had a little bit of a look. I mean, uh, in the in the Austrian landscape of uh, of hubs. And I found uh, they're very specialized. I think one was of mechatronic and the other one was, uh, I don't remember something like in pharma or, or healthcare. So what would be your approach for a company like ours sitting in Vienna? And then you said act regional is good. I fully understand. I mean, these days we cannot meet, but usually it's nicer than we can come together. Uh, but, but how do I find my hub? Uh, what could be, be the best approach for an SME or a startup, for example? For, for such a collaboration. If these topics like mechatronic and pharma doesn't fit, that's the one that we, are, we have in Vienna. I think there are two of them. Yeah, so, so I would say you, you start from, as I said before, first you start from regional, you don't see there are regional or mm -hmm. there is like uh, um, the portfolio of digital innovation, well, the list of digital innovation hubs that are like more pan-European pan or are, mm -hmm. um, in different uh, uh, disciplines and then you can contact them and then there are also the, the whole networks that are also advertised so it's you already have here a contact so it's sometimes easy uh, if you know like uh, 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 like Daniel me or mm. somebody like that that we are just right. starting point that we can uh, say okay uh, uh, we ask what are your requirements what you need and then we mm. redirect you it's, it's not like that uh, it, it should be us to, to you know support you but uh, we are in number of networks so so we are not alone and we are in as, as I said uh, in several networks of innovation hubs and depending on the technology we just redirect you mm -hmm. yes Thank you very much. that's very helpful actually, for lots of people actually I think this is what the European Commission is addressing in the new digital Euro program to create this European network of digital innovation hubs they are uh, aiming to uh, include in this network one DIH per region, per European region at least. And uh, also their objective is that every every company, every SMEs has uh, digital innovation hubs as a, such a working distance. So I think this is the, the, the main issue of this program, well, of this program, of course, until it will be in place. I think the best is to, to follow what Marcy mentioned before, just to, to try to, to contact the closest uh, the DIH and otherwise contact uh, uh, European networks. From our perspective, I think, uh, as I already mentioned before, I think that we think that trust is crucial for to accompany those small actors in, the, in this journey of digitalization. And uh, this is why, uh, in principle, all members of uh, you have for data, but also PTBI spaces, are very deeply rooted in their respective ecosystem. But also I think the DIH are also based on a non-profit approach. So this is also another, um, another advantage to, 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 be, uh, to, to, to be trusted. 
but also because we are, or at least we should be a uh, technology agnostic, agnostic. It means that uh, at every time we should adv advise or we should propose the best solution for our, our customers, for our companies, uh, not considering uh, our own profit, but or rather their own um, benefit for those companies. And again, not being, uh, being technology agnostic, being very neutral in this case, and try to, to, to get the best for them. So all in all, I think that uh, the trust uh, has to be gained during years. So again, those DIAs has to be have to be very uh, very deeply rooted in the ecosystem, with the history behind them, behind us, and also uh, with the consolidated position in the regional ecosystems. Um, uh, again, this is what the European Commission is trying to to create in the new new program, uh, uh, this European network of digital innovation hubs that cover uh, basically AI, uh, robotics, cyber security. Uh, but also other other initiatives. But until this network is in place, again, as Mars Invention mentioned before, I think the best option is just to contact uh, well, <laughs> your your regional DIH and otherwise the networks in in Europe. Yeah. Thanks, Daniel. So so if you're talking about trust, Mars, and maybe you can elaborate a little bit on on what that means in terms of business models uh, that uh, DIHs have been using uh, for maintaining uh, operations. So the, the expectations of the management and the costs, and you know, so as you've said already something about the time. Yeah, so, so I think that's uh, one of the crucial issues of several DIHs, I think, <laughs> is I, I, there are in, in general two types. As, as you see the list of the, what Sai shared, this is the, the, the uh, before, this is the list of uh, non-profit, uh, let's say, uh, uh, digital innovation hubs. There are also digital innovation hubs that are, you know, profit oriented. So those profit oriented have uh, are usually those that uh, that that are um, uh, that uh, collaborates with with large industry and with uh, with um, um, the, the companies production companies things like that and they are maybe smaller very, very dedicated and uh, the, the the funds coming usually from this this industry for this public or or, or uh, non profit I would say. Uh, once they, they have more challenges. So far I discussed with, in several networks with several DA ages. So basically most of them are based on project funds or on the different these European initiatives that, that uh, also Daniel mentioned that the European Commission will fund. And uh, so the only model I think I, I heard that is that is reasonable is if you have enough, you know, critical mass and, and you, you, you have the fees, okay? And uh, and I think that's that's somehow where where the things start to be sustained, not looking into into projects. And many of the DIHs are having this issue that they are basing just on one project. Project is finishing, and uh, okay, and then then you have you have an issue. And and the other model is that you have anyway uh, your company well or institution that is is working in this digital innovation hub. Is, is part of, of your exploitation together with, with partners, local partners, where you don't need to additionally invest a lot, but, uh, uh, but it's part of, of, this, of, of what company well, or institutes is anyway running, but it's just what I see from my perspective. So, so I think it's, it's, it's um, uh, mostly, I would say, as I see now the landscape, it's still a project or EC, EC uh, funded, only few I know of the regional funding, and this this is also through European Commission, but regional funds. And uh, yeah, that's that's what I know. And, and Marcin, how will this, for example, how will the EOSC Digital Innovation Hub be connected to EOSC Future? Is part of. Okay, that's good. Okay, so. So we are expanding uh, actually in EOSC uh, future uh, towards uh, uh, scaling from let's say 18 to, to let's say, I don't remember the numbers, but it's uh, more than hundred, right? So this is, this is about the getting scale, right? Yeah, maybe just a short remark, Martin speaking. Uh, uh, in Austria, at least we see that also national contact points support uh, the learning about digital innovation hubs. I saw it on the FFG website. Is that uh, a way you would also recommend to get in touch with national contact points? Yeah, I think the national contact points has a good knowledge, at least on okay. all the ones that are funded through 
through European funds, but national, but going from European, right? So not directly from from Commission programs. So this is yeah. this is uh, the, the the ones that is that are country funded somehow, and national contact points for sure have the knowledge of, of them. Okay. But one question, Martin, this is Daniel speaking, uh, but I think that the, the figure of Digital Innovation Hub uh, as such, as was proposed by the Commission, in principle has a non-profit approach, right? If the, the ones that are there, uh, the figure is it, it's just uh, non-profit, because if you are profit, you cannot be on this list. Yeah, And so. But, but there are more hubs, uh, much more hubs that I know that are... Uh, okay. um, uh, that, 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 that are profit oriented. So I see your point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Other type of, of hubs. Absolutely. Yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. And I know few few of them because yeah. Uh, yeah okay. And I would say uh, mostly these are in Germany, the, the very very west of Germany, where the, these are the let's say very profit oriented, because where where the industry, the large industry, is there, right? So. Thank you. So let's move to the next question. Unless there are other questions in this in the chat, Sai. Uh, no. Once again, I think just uh, just a, just a series of comments. Really, um, no real um, no real questions. I think it's just a reinforcement of a lot of the things that the the panelists has been saying across the board. I think maybe the only maybe additional point that I may have put in the chat were these kind of links to. Um, the European Digital Innovation Hub Network that the, the Commission is trying to coalesce and have established contact points. So having like formalized national contact points. And I know that there are a number of different countries now that are going through an internal national selection of which ones of these digital innovation hubs will be like formally represented in this overall. So I think previously this was just like go to your contact point where now this is becoming much more kind of formalized and, and, and evolving into a specific, uh, to a specific direction, so. Um. Nice, perfect. Okay, so, so, I mean, you've mentioned already this, this is, I think, a continuation of what you're mentioning here, Sai. So what are the opportunities out there and the support available? Um, I think, Daniel, maybe you can start with this question. Yes, of course. Now, uh, as uh, probably most of you already know, we are now in the at the end of this Horizon 2020 program. So most of the initiatives that have been created during this uh, this program now are are uh, reaching this point of experimentation and very close to market. And this is, I think, this is why the Commission is now uh, promoting and most, well, not not most of the projects, but many many projects involving. DIH are, uh, are promoting open calls to, to foster this experimentation, this innovation, to engage uh, SMEs, startups, and companies on the on the on the program. So now this is why many many initiatives involving networks and DIH are now uh, promoting uh, launching open calls again to, to involve this uh, this end user in the, in the experimentation. In the case of uh, I have to promote now because in the case of you have for data. It is our case. We are launching in December, on the 14th of December, our first open call uh, to engage uh, end users to, to use the, the services of the Federation. So we are targeting mainly basically SMEs and startups uh, to propose experiments that involve uh, services from different DIH at European level so that we can experiment with the cross-border uh, data sharing, cross-border uh, services and, and so on. So we, in this open call, we will be financing uh, 10 experiments, uh, each one uh, up to uh, 60 key euros for, uh, for beneficiary. And uh, again, I encourage all of you to uh, stay tuned to our webpage because we will be uh, announcing uh, very soon. But of course, there are other projects in the Big Data Value PPP. And for instance, our, our let's say, our sister project, which is REACH, the new, the new generation of data incubators, has already launched the, the first open call to, to get uh, startups to propose also challenges uh, involving, involving data. So this uh, open call is already available. And also another project is Media Futures, which is the new uh, digital innovation hub in the media sector, which I think is very interesting because it involves artists, it involves, uh, uh, well, a different perspective for, for data. And they will be also launching the, the open call very soon. So if you are in more in the art uh, sector, 
this is your this is your case. But again, there are many many of them. Uh, we will try to um, to publish all these open calls in the big data value web page and promote. But again, I, I want to emphasize the one for from you as for data, of course. Yeah. Thank you, Daniel. So all to keep an eye out uh, for these calls uh, that are open that are opening on the 14th of December, right? Yeah, our, our open call. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Martin, do you want to do you yeah, want to just, just to add that there are two kinds of support uh, because one is direct funding and another mechanism, as I mentioned before, is a kind of voucher that you get a voucher and the voucher is for something for getting expertise, for getting resources, for getting number of things. So there are different mechanisms that, that, uh, that uh, well, um, you can be supported. Sometimes it's not direct funding, right? So, and uh, yeah, so to make also to advertise, uh, to add to Daniel's list, I think there are also a few other, depending on the domains, uh, open calls into agriculture. I think this is the smart uh, agri-hubs that is the network of all agri-hubs uh, projects in Europe. That is another network that is constantly uh, having the open calls and uh, definitely we are also uh, also there, so that's why I'm advertising. Another kind if is the uh, DIH for CPS, so this is cyber physical systems where they, I think they are just about to to finalize another, uh, the first call and they will have another call that's also very interesting. And we are also announcing all of these calls on the EOS core uh, webpage and sending to community so everybody be, uh, could be aware, but most of the mechanism I would say now is, is through these open calls all partnership in, in the new projects. Thanks, Marcin. Martin, do you want to add anything to this and also related to what you mentioned earlier in terms of the, the data strategy for Europe? To this maybe, um, but I would like to reflect on another thing that Sai said before uh, and also Daniel about data sharing in both directions. Maybe we can have a short one on this. Because I think trust is really here the thing that, that plays the, uh, the most important role and security for sure. Uh, and I agree it should go into both ways. The issue I see is that uh, the industrial data, I don't know, people are, are grabbing it that it can't let loose. So even in consortia that we are working where we have dedicated consortium partners from industry and they committed to provide the data for an consortium uh, system or project, we, we sometimes needed more than a year to get the commitment to get the data out of their systems or one and a half year even because of security issues and stuff like that. So here I think we should think about collaboration models. I think it's, it's at the beginning we, in this data market uh, and data spaces idea we were all about uh, a data market can sell, right? We can sell data and we can buy data and that maybe it, it works in some dimension. Uh, but what we see much more coming up is really data collaboration bilateral between two partners or three, four partners. And I think that's the way where we should go. And this is something we could also do between industry or should do between industry and, and, and open science or science data. Uh, and then make a clear framework around how trust and security works. But what are the incentives in both directions? So what do I get for my data set or can I collaborate or can I get an, another benefit that must not be money to be put on the table? Um, that would be something we should foster because I see it's still a little bit of two worlds, at least in, in when, when I move. And when I come into the EOSC world, then everybody speaks about the target group of, of academia. And when I go into the, uh, the data strategy or BDVA world, I see everybody speaking about the industrial data. And I think these worlds should really start to speak. I mean, that's what we do today. <laughs> we speak with each other. And and, uh, and also, I think that's a big topic. And we also had it in discussion in the forefront of this panel without reinventing the wheel, right? Because uh, if we all do the same things in two different worlds, and then we try to map it, maybe we could have a look what one world has and the other one has, and then bring things together. That would be a very nice thing. But I know it's not totally to your question. <laughs> it's, it's an important it's a, it's statement I nice, wanted to make. Yeah. Uh, it's a very nice comment, and I think maybe Daniel, you 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 want to you want to comment on this as well. Yes, of course, I completely agree with with Martin. In the case of data sharing, uh, the lack of standards uh, at European level is hampering this uh, this collaboration. Uh, it's true that uh, for companies to to share their data, they are very very reluctant, and it takes time for them to to share. 
And even if at the end we, we, we succeeded to, to, to share those data is in a very, let's say, bad conditions. So, so again, the lack of standards is hampering this, this opportunity. This is why, for instance, IDSA, that I know it's also involved in trust, is providing the reference model. And also, in US for data, we are also adopting the IDSA model. But again, uh, this, this, uh, this is crucial to, to foster data sharing, uh, mostly in the private sector, with private uh, and also personal data. So I completely agree with you, with Martin, and I, I cannot uh, add anything else. Yeah. Thank you. Then I know that we're quick, quick, quick question to Martin, by the way, do you had so from the industry perspective, are you aware of this international data spaces, this, this IDSA? Forget. Yes, I think they are there. Okay, in the trust, yeah. okay. the trust uh, project, we're together. Uh, we're uh, aware of Gaia X that okay. has been mentioned before. Yeah. And okay. we have something that is called, which is a curiosity uh, of mine. Thanks. Yeah, there's also data uh, intelligence offensive in Austria, the DIO, that is a little bit similar. I mean, Austria is like this and Germany is like that. So, but uh, and we try to work together. We had a data market Austria project funded by the national government. Uh, it was a research project. We had interesting outcomes and findings. To be honest, the data market is not operated in life uh, because it did not find a way into operations and business models. Uh, but that was very similar to the e EDSA, so the industrial data space, what they did at the beginning in Germany. But thanks for the hint. Yeah, I'm aware. Thanks, and I, uh, we need to to start wrapping up this uh, this conversation. I, I think we we could go on for for a very long time. I think there's a lot of opportunities for collaboration, even between the people on the on the call. Um, but um, I want to ask you for one very short. Uh, recommendation. I know that you've mentioned a lot of them already. We, we've talked a lot about trust, we've talked about incentives, we've talked about collaboration, but maybe you can pull out that one main recommendation to foster engagement with the, the private sector for uptake of EOSC resources. Who wants to go first? And maybe Sai, you want to you want to add yours as well? Martin, go. I make it a very short one and it's nothing new, but I think we have to, to do it again. We have to speak with each other to try to understand each other because uh, this was one of the beginning statements. These worlds are very different. These are two worlds, the interest, the requirements, the timelines, the standards, uh, everything has been developed in a, in a bubble to say it like this, nothing negative. Uh, I think speaking with each other is the first point. So we have to find ways to speak with each other, what we do in shock, what is nice. Uh, we do this work with the University of Nottingham and the University of uh, Vienna and also with Auster and Sesta, what we do in electoral studies and there we have learned a lot and we should foster that much more. And the DIH, I guess, is a, is a good way to do so. Daniel. Okay, well, thanks, Mike. Just to emphasize uh, previous message, messages, uh, well, I think that uh, there are a lot of instruments uh, out there. Um, because again, during the last uh, six years, the European Commission has financed a lot of a lot of instruments. Uh, so, if you are, I, I would recommend if you are in the offer side, if you are a technology provider uh, or you are a European project, just try to find synergies with the existing initiatives. Where, because there are many of them. We have, for instance, uh, we didn't mention before AI for EU, which is the AI, AI for uh, um, uh, uh, on-demand platform in Europe, but also different networks of DIH, you ask for data, EOS. So again, there are, there are many initiatives if you are a provider to, 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 to be engaged with. And again, if you are in the, in the demand side, just try to contact your regional hub, or I didn't know this list that the site provided before, but again, try to contact your national contact point just to, to find the most, let's say, um, uh, useful instrument for you. But again, uh, there are a lot of instruments. It's not necessary to, to invent anything new. Yes, now it's much a, a way of co a matter of collaborating, foster collaboration between the different instruments in the, in the European landscape. Yeah. Marcin. Okay, I, I think uh, this is uh, from EOSC uh, DIH perspective. So maybe on behalf of me on, on SAI, I would say that uh, this is not to reinvent, reinvent things. And as Daniel said, a lot of the things are already there. And, and um, basically, let's uh, work together on this instead and let's try to find synergy and, and be complementary and also this refers to whole EOS ecosystem this is sub message uh, that let's work together 
uh, uh, between projects and let's not reinvent 10 EOS DI ages <laughs> and each fragmented, let's strengthen the, this initiative and try to work together on this. Yeah, so we are very open for that. So do you want to close off with yours? Yeah, my, mine's going to be a general message, I think, which is I'm not sure I've ever sat in a panel where I've basically agreed with almost everything that has been said. And even in addition to that, the, the, the key messages, I think probably what's been contributed here are probably one of the most important underlying messages and important issues to kind of tackle in this specific space. So for me, the discussion has been has been spot on in terms of capturing the the key the key points moving forward the lessons learned the recommendations and stuff like that so um yeah thanks thanks from 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 my side for for this um and that i have really nothing left to add other than what has kind of already been said so um it's a, it's a pity that we are not uh you know in some physical place uh, together and uh, um yeah. yeah, absolutely. I agree. Yeah, I agree. So let's let's close off this 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 uh, this session with the uh, with synergies, speaking to each other, uh, not reinventing the wheel, and 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 a lot of collaboration. And uh, and let's speak again. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thanks to you. Thanks everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye.